Hey guys, I hope that everybody is having an absolutely wonderful day. Welcome back, but if you are new here, then welcome. My name is Chewy, and I like to play some strategy games. Today we're going to be playing some Victoria 2, but in the words of Killian, before I do anything, let's change this map mode, because this one hurts my eyes a bit. We're going to be playing some Victoria 2 today with the H... HPM mod, the I think it's called Historical Project mod. HPM mod, I guess, is a little bit redundant, but that is what we're going to be playing with today. Uh, what this does is it is essentially a balance slash, um, you know, flavor historical fix mod. Fixes some borders, fixes some events, uh, fixes economy stuff late game, because I'm under the impression that Victoria 2's late game economy is very strange. Um, I am by no means a master at uh, Vicky 2, but uh, the hype around Vicky 3 has definitely got me interested in learning a bit more. So that way when Vicky 3 comes through, I'm going to be a little bit more savvy. And hopefully you guys will be learning a bit with me. And I encourage you, please leave some comments down below. Let me know how you feel about Vicky 2 and uh, teach me. Teach me a thing or two because I'm happy to learn. Uh, so the U.S. who we will be playing as in, in 1836 president is uh andrew jackson democrat and uh his um his vice president his vp uh martin van buren later won the election in december of 1836 many people are aware the united states went through a bloody 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 civil war in uh the 1860s and uh likely we will have to see what happens in this one so right off the bat we have a few armies so let's uh let's get these guys grouped up here um and so you can see texas over here is independent texas at one point was an independent republic and uh, as you can see they are at war with a big beefy mexico uh the empire of mexico led by uh oh what is his name see i'm not gonna be really good at the historical stuff i I'm, I'm much more savvy with medieval stuff as many of you guys may know if you watch me through eu4 uh, so initially we are going to be laissez-faire this is our politics situation we are run, ruled by the democratic party our national national value is liberty which gives us reform desire immigrant attraction which is good mobilization size mobilization impact and commerce tech research very good stuff we are currently have the democratic party free trade laissez-faire moralism uh limited citizenship pro-military and no official policy on welfare uh we have two upper house representatives per state which is actually still the, the case today two senators per state uh trade unions are allowed debtors prison interesting slavery is allowed uh in at this time in america hence the civil war coming up here in about 30 years or 25 years uh public meetings are allowed the press press is free open borders rural uh cultural rights apparently child labor is legal uh, voting system is first past the post, which I believe is also still correct. Or still correct. Still, um, in, in, in effect in America is what I meant to say. Weighted universal. So basically the rich are, uh, counted. The, the landowners are more, uh, powerful. Two-year draft. Gerrymandering political parties or political rights. Yeah, political parties, rather. Unlimited workday. Um, unemployment has no benefits. No healthcare benefits. No penal system. Or capital punishment, so... Convicts are killed for relatively minor crimes. Kind of funny. Um, no school system, no pensions, no safety regulations, and trinkets minimum wage. You have no um, no movements, and a lot of decisions are here, but these are mostly through the HPM mod. Um, we could release Canada, Colombia, Liberia, Liberia, or uh, New England. We will do none of those. First, tech. Generally, you want to rush idealism. In the meantime, I think it would be best for us to get um probably ideological thought which will unlock a couple of plurality texts here P plurality is kind of synonymous with research um initially we are going to have our two highest population states here sent focused on intellectuals so we can get our uh, research points up as quickly as possible um army wise let's get those guys grouped up here we need to be prepared because hopefully we are going to be allowing Texas to join our union here. And uh, diplomacy, we are going to focus our um, political power here on Texas. I don't think we need to. I think they get added by for free, but uh, I will check regardless. 
and then we'll put two points into them and then south america we will get a point in everybody that is relevant here peru and versus peru bolivia huh i don't know i'm not worried about them i'd rather worry about brazil and venezuela and colombia and chile the majors down here so you got colombia venezuela empire brazil peru bolivia and uh chile that is weird though peru bolivia is three okay so they must be like a, a satellite yeah Argentine Confederation. So over in Europe, you have Prussia is blue, which is funny. Uh, I prefer yellow Prussia. It's a joke about Victoria on release about a yellow Prussia, apparently. Uh, by the way, we're using the Mishmash vision mod, visual mod. If anybody is wondering why my game might look different than yours, Mishmash visual mod with the opaque um, opaque mod map, map mode. That's what we're looking at. Austria Hungary is or Austria is beefy. Um, France looks about what France does. The UK, Sweden, uh, in a personal union over uh norway the russia the russian empire with uh, the king the king uh the, the sardom still in effect the ottoman empire ruling over egypt the british raj or british india the Qing empire massive absolutely massive the shogunate of japan you got the spanish philippines much of the dutch east asia the dutch east indies rather australia uh africa yes british south africa a couple of things over here we actually own a little bit of clay right here in liberia uh, Ottomans, Tunis, and Tripoli. Is Tripoli a vassal? No, they are not. Interesting. So that's about what we're looking at. We have this two Sicilies and Sardinia Piedmont. Sardinia Piedmont historically is the nation that united Italy under one banner. And uh, Prussia, if you take a look at our um, sphere, sphere of influence map mode, you see Prussia is working towards forming the North German Confederation, and Austria has Bavaria, Saxony, and a few other miners, uh, Baden and uh, Württemberg down here. And Hanover will soon fall from the United Kingdom sphere of influence because I believe, yes, they are right now a satellite kingdom, a personal union is actually what it is under the United Kingdom. But Victoria, the reason why this game is called, or it starts at the date it does, is because Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom rose to the throne in 1836, I believe. And so hence, when she rises to the throne, Hanover is, um, the, the personal union of Hanover is lost. Prussia gobbles it up and they form the North German Confederation soon after. So all interesting stuff. Let's unpause today. Oh, actually I lied. We're going to get our stuff sorted out here. So we cannot raise our taxes, which is a, an absolute bummer. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut my spending there and crank my spending up here. Military spending. Let's crank that up as well. Tariffs. We don't want to have too high because we want our capitalists to be able to import goods if they need to. So let's give them a couple of months and see if it will. Mail access from Texas is fine. Um, maybe we cut our spending a bit over here. Ideally, this stuff will stabilize. We have plenty of money in the bank. So we're not super worried about things, um, you know, being maybe a little bit unstable initially. That's okay. But yes, if you guys are excited for some Victoria 2, please do make sure you show your support. Leave a like on the video. It helps me out way more than you know it does. And also, if you have not already subscribed, like I said, you can expect more content like this in the future. So as you can see over here, we are encouraging intellectuals and we, will, we are gaining plenty of them, which is actually raising this uh, research points quite a bit, actually. It's already up like 0.1 at least since I looked last. You can see our literacy is at 58.3% of the population. And it is expected to rise a bit. But yes, oh yeah, these points are going up quite quickly, which is really good for us. We already have a steamer shipyard that is bankrupt here. But we're not allowed to touch any of this, actually. Yep, we have no say in how this goes. Part of it, Fun part about being laissez-faire. So, one thing we can do... Oh, we're not even allowed to invest in these pops. That's crazy. The capitalists are in charge of everything. All right, laissez-faire it is. So we have tax efficiency, 2%. So that's good. And there you can see our money going up. So we're going to continue. We want to make sure we're spending, working on military spending, excuse me, spending, because what that does is it essentially raises the amount of men that we are able to um, land. Uh, more men is good for our economy, of course. So yes, we have a bottling work coming up, which is really good. Uh, that's going to bring in quite a bit of money for our economy here. Let's turn that down just a bit, maybe down to 90%. Or a little bit below that. And so our pops are doing okay. Uh, most of them are receiving... There we go here. 
their life needs and m most are getting everyday needs middle class a little less well off but uh, this is okay we're doing our best here my goal would be to avoid debt early on and i want these guys cranked all the way up because we want to make sure we are cranking up our um education as quickly as possible as early as possible and same with our administrative efficiency uh, where is that map mode here? Administrative efficiency, you can see here, it's uh, not super high in a lot of our states, and uh, it will go up over time based on our um, administrative techs, or uh, our administration. So spending on administration allows your bureaucrats to run and maintain a healthy bureaucracy, increasing our tariff efficiency and the rate of population promotion. The Central Republic of America is asking for an alliance, and they are not a good ally, because as you can see here, they are um, splintered right here. They're going to start spitting out a bunch of little people here. So Texas is no longer um, no longer in, at war with Mexico. They lost their independence war with Mexico, but they are now they are now considered. Oh, they are now independent, actually. Interesting. OK, so let's take a look at our military and we are actually allowed to increase our opinion with Texas, which we are going to do. We're going to get them into our sphere of influence as soon as possible. Um, let's take a look at, um, where are we at here? Population density. No, I want to see. Mm hmm. Migration. Yes, that's a good one. So you can see we have Mexico's gaining a ton of immigrants from the UK. Goodness gracious. Two from Austria. Um, and we are gaining a bunch from the UK as well. So as you can see, the UK clearly losing some people, mostly to Mexico and ourselves. Who else we got? Oh, that's mostly it. The Spain is losing a bit. Yeah, most of these are them. Okay, well, fine with me. So what we need to do here, um, and there is sort of a meta here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these Dragoons because Dragoons are not super useful. What we're going to do here is uh, consider how we want our armies to be set up. So what I found to be optimal is we want four infantry, four cannons, a Hussar, which is a, a heavy cavalry unit regiment, and an engineer who will help us uh, siege down forts. So these guys come over here and these guys will break off one unit and have them split up here into DC. Oh, come on now. Up to DC. And then what I'm going to do here is we need four cannons. Or three cannons, three cannons. So six cannons total. And we're going to need more. So let's just go with... Well, uh, if we can avoid Dixie artillery, we probably should, right? Uh, looks like I can't. So this is okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then one, two, three, four for an extra stack. And then army-wise, we're going to need Hussars. So we need... Is there any Yankee Hussars? So, yeah, let's do Yankees if we can. One, two, three. So, if, yeah, if you take a look at our cultural map mode here uh, in the... Four, or, I say 1444, 1836, you can see that we are working with... Uh, the majority of Nashville area is Dixie. I'm from Nashville. Cool fact for you. Native American Miner is the majority over here and then you have the dakota and then you have yankees hence where you get the name yankee and you have a lot of afro-americans around here as well afro-americans of course african-american is kind of the the more um you know politically correct i guess term you would say nowadays our economy is taking a hit but that's only because we are currently buying up a bunch of goods to uh land these artillery quite expensive but we have a nice stockpile, so we're good. Uh, let us set a Charleston to be a place for our guys to go meet up. And uh, that's pretty good. Fantastic news. Cool. Also, we need to start colonizing Idaho. Send some boys out. Go see how it goes. Because you can see the life rating here is pretty good. 35. And let's continue to progress here. So we got 11 mana wars and nine frigates, three transports. Not bad. Spending quite a bit of money on purchasing 
to be expected you can see we're starting to progress here and we are continuing to increase so this this whole this whole system is very foreign to a lot of eu4 people but you can see we have our priority set up here so we are gaining influence with texas every month same with venezuela each of these guys is gaining a little bit you can see we are the only one of the major powers which hmm, i don't care about them if you take a look here there are eight major powers in the world great powers the uk is number one by a long shot and we we're about one third the power of the uk followed by the russian empire france austria prussia us the ottomans and then spain you can see who their allies slash people in their sphere of influence are so we have a long ways to go if we want to um be strong enough to actually deal with them and there you go you can hear our boys coming out here our artillery is being landed and i will actually just yoink them as they come out and so we just had our political parties so you can see we are 78 percent conservative which is the democratic party uh there was a great shift in the parties where the conservative party used to be the democrats and the liberal party was the whigs the liberal party became the republican party which was the party of uh, abraham lincoln and uh that became the conservative party in time but they were the liberal party at that time so you can see uh railroads starting to get built as well which is good infrastructure is at 16 percent in most of our things and the ascension of queen victoria today in the year of our lord 1837 william the fourth by the grace of god king of the united kingdom of great britain and ireland defender of the faith died in windsor castle Long live the queen. God save the queen. Or whatever you uh, you silly people across the pond say. Artillery is much like an E4. Damage from the background. Let's get a Hussar over here. Hussars are important because you can see here, Hussars give... Uh, is it going to tell me here if I hover over it? Reconnaissance of two. So that means it can manage uh, five stacks or five units of another type including its and uh it will apply recon recon scouts out sieges and uh, reduces dig in bonus of enemy armies so very important things to consider get our hussar over here our economy is definitely not feeling too good right now texas can improve their relation so as you can see here once you have 50, you can increase increase your friendly your relationship. And once you have them to friendly, once you get up to 100, you can add them to your sphere of influence, which we have nobody in our sphere of influence right now. Nobody in the world. France wants military access. That's fine with me. I don't mind. We at war with France. Nobody. No. They're at war with Mexico. What? What's? What in the world? Why would they be at war with Mexico? French intervention in Mexico. Demand reparations. Okay. Well, that's totally fine with me because the Spanish-American War or the Mexican-American War is quite soon over the horizon. So let's turn our army spending down a bit. As you can see, we can land 50 units. We can afford to land 50 units. And I'm not too concerned about that currently. Let us uh, get rid of factory construction and building construction there because that's clogging up a lot of this stuff over here. Let's go up to speed five for now and continuing to get our units over here. So these guys are done for now. Now I just need to get my engineer, which we get through muzzle loaded rifles, which I don't know what they used before that flintlock rifles. Goodness gracious. Definitely used muzzle loaders in uh, in the Civil War. So we can now create a protectorate out here. And so we shall welcome Idaho. And um, nothing in our colonies needs attention. Okay, very good. So we have our four cav, four infantry. Um, so as you can see here, you got four and one. This makes up your front line. And then four with the engineer. Engineers are backline units. And that will fill out the back line there and these guys will be done and until we get our engineers that is an artillery there that will head up to this new stack that we're merging 
We can now create a state of Washington. Search high or search low? Well, since uh, considering we have much less rich strata, I would rather them be the ones to gain militancy. Get those guys up there. Population is going up quite a bit. I reckon we are getting a decent bit of uh, migration right now from the UK. Very good for us. These Knoxville artillery. And I'm just keeping an eye on this button right here that will light up when we need to be adding people to our sphere of influence. Our economy is now starting to get cleared up. Uh, losing militancy with a bunch of pops and plurality, which plurality is essentially research points, so it's nice. Um, if you don't know uh, what's going on with the pops, Vicky too, um, and I'm trying to be as educational as I can, but you have to remember, I only have like 30 hours in Victoria, so I'm not super, super savvy, but I'm hoping to teach a little bit of what I know as I'm going along here. Uh, the pops start, um, there, there's a bunch of different types of pops. You have your slaves, of course. You have, well, let's go with all. So you have, we have 59 or 50, 530,000 slaves in America currently. Uh, we have 108,000 soldiers, trained soldiers. Then you have officers, you have laborers, farmers, craftsmen, clerks, uh, intellectuals, capitalists, only 1,000 capitalists. That's kind of crazy, actually. Uh, bureaucrats, artisans, and landowners. And these are the people that make up your kind of backbone of your country. Um, they actually are legitimately pops. Like, these are your pops. So as you can see, if we unpause, you can see our... Um, we will be gaining, and it's all going here. It's calculated daily. It's a beautiful, beautiful system. That's why one of the big things about Vicky 3 that people are kind of hoping, you know, doesn't get messed up, so to speak. That sound right there means we are done with our ideological thought, meaning we have another one of these guys to unlock. So encourage more intellectuals. And since it is not uh, 1840 yet, we cannot start this one yet. So let us go with positivism, which will give us education efficiency, which will allow us to upgrade our education quicker, which will allow us to get more research in the long term. All good things. You can see over here that we are almost up to 100 with Texas and we'll be able to add them to our sphere. And soon after that, we'll be able to get a decision that will bring them into our fold. Mexico can accept or intervene. And I'm under the impression that they will always intervene. And at which point we will declare war on them. Texas can now be added to our sphere of influence. And now if we take a look at our sphere of influence map mode, Texas is considered part of America's or USA's sphere of influence. Now they're offering me an alliance. That's fine with me. Anything that's going to improve our relations. We're now maxed out on relations, which is good. All these guys down here are going to be able to increase our relation with them soon as well. I think we can probably cut you guys down, which will free up plenty more influence to get spread out amongst those guys down here. And uh, as you can see, we can increase our opinion with Venezuela. They are now neutral. Colombia, now neutral. Uh, as you can see here, they are neutral with everybody. So they dislike the USA in the very beginning here. We can give statehood to Michigan, so we shall do that. Create a state, another astounding victory for the United States of America as it has become clear that Michigan will, as has been expected for some time, be taken up in the part of American patrimony with full rights of national statehood. Obviously, we will not extend uh, slavery here. What that will do is it raises consciousness, which is kind of like America's sort of um, interest in political goings-ons in the nation. That's my understanding. Militancy is people's interest in, you know, rebellion. So you have to make sure that you're kind of going back and forth and uh, balancing out those two things. If one gets too high, you have issues. So it's good to make sure you keep those in mind. Brazil, add them to... Make sure we continue to improve them because I would like to extend my sphere of influence to South America. So you can see rebel fac factions are organizing. We have a slave revolt that is... Ru oh my. Uh, that's quite a few men that I've included in there. A Nash an alliance offer with Mexico. That's a no from me. We can also increase our opinion with Ecuador. Very good. Let me take a drink of my water here real quick. Good stuff, some high quality H2O. 
Always stay hydrated, friends. It's very important. As you can see here, we have our prestige of 55. We have industrial power of 26 and military power of 44. Those numbers will certainly be going up in time. As you can see over here, we are still encouraging these. And you can see how much this number has gone up by almost two points since we started. So we've gained a 20% increase in our research power just since we started, which is really good. Now we'll only go up as time goes on. So this uh, plurality, very good. Now we'll keep our stuff going up. So you can see here, uh, we can enact the following decisions. The Trail of Tears, the House Gag Rule, and the Kansas-Nebraska Act. So... Trail of Tears is the English rendition of the Cherokee's name for the forced relocation of the greater Cherokee nation from its homelands in the southeastern United States, Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, to newly established Indian territories in Oklahoma. Uh, one of uh, a very notorious act um, pulled out by uh, Andrew Jackson, if I recall correctly. So what this does is it raises the consciousness, but uh, it loses militancy and it mo removes the Cherokee populations and moves them, which is fine with me organized the Indian Territory, which uh, does some more of this stuff. That is fine with me as well. The House gag rule, seemingly irresolvable debate over slavery, threatens to tear our country apart. And there's some good foreshadowing there. If we were to introduce a gag rule in the House of Representatives, barring bills on, on the slavery issue from being presented in the House, we could hope that the to at least alleviate some of the worst tensions. So this is um, something to help lower consciousness. Um, basically it is a bit of a, um, you know, a consolation to, um, the people of the Senate that are supporting of slavery. So we will give statehood to Kansas as well. Yeah, American Washington, huh? Washington, really? Of all places? That's fine. You guys can have statehood as well. Nobody shall be permitted to have slaves though. Nice. Horace Mann, politi politician and lawyer, Horace Mann. Began his reforms to the educational system of Massachusetts. His system of schools became the model for the entire United States. Gives us a ton of research points. That's really good. A ton of plura some plurality and some prestige. Or we can get the basic school system reform. So that's quite a bit of research points. I would almost finish out positivism. Pos pos positivism? Uh... Or on the flip side, we get a reform, which is basic school systems, which is assimilation rate, immigration attraction, which is really good, and education efficiency. Ooh. You know, both of those sound pretty good. I think I'll take the research points. You can see it starts shooting up right there, which is good because that means we're going to be able to take our next one. So in Victoria, you can stack up a year's worth of points. So... If you need to take a tech here, like Idealism gives us 50% research points, which is a huge buff. We want to wait until 1840. And uh, it's nice because the game will save up a year's worth of uh, research points for you. Arkansas is seeking statehood. So we will allow them in on the one condition that they get rid of slavery. So over here, we need some infantry. So let's get three more infantry into our ranks over here. Uh, not a regular infantry. Do we have a single Yankee infantry? We have not a single Yankee infantry. That's okay. These guys will come up here. We do not need them grouping there. They will merge into that unit in DC. Wisconsin is also seeking statehood. There we go. Welcome, Wisconsin. Yeah, most, most of this out here is actually considered, you know, quote unquote, colonial at that time. So kind of an interesting concept, you know, only, what, 180 years ago, but the borders of the United States look extremely different from what they do today. I always thought that was super interesting. More plurality, which means more research points. Plurality shows up right here. And it is going up monthly as well. Sh level of shared consciousness. Nebraska and South Dakota. So South Dakota, you will be let in. And Nebraska, which looks like a cannon. I always thought it looked like a cannon. I always thought that was cool. There we go. And we're losing a bit of money. We got the, the Kansas-Nebraska Act, which uh, lowers consciousness in uh, slave states and raises it in non-slave states. Lose plurality. 
unfortunate sphere of influence moves for Columbia so we can improve these guys so now they are cordial whereas everybody else is neutral nobody else is raising any points over here except for the UK is in Venezuela so we'll have to keep an eye on them and make sure that they're not interfering with our sphere of influence down there more plurality more research points and on the monthly tick here we will be able to uh there we go and an election is beginning as well so there's a little bit of a shuffle that goes around this is basically kind of a a correction if you will to the current ruling parties uh and uh, we are in an election year apparently so yep it has been four years so this is the first re-election of what would be martin van buren montana is uh where is it at? right here that's wyoming montana is right here i know the u.s states and um okay We'll go with idealism and you can see here um project should be completed on 07 of 41 but uh, it will actually you'll see when we unpause how much it's going to jump forward because we have an entire year's worth of points saved up which is really nice so nice thing that you can do here okay so we have the american trade policy being heated a heated debate in the united states of america so what we're looking for is essentially to keep our party in power, maintain stability, prevent any major, you know, civil political unrest in the states that would be preferred here. So if we take a look here, we say the party popularity, the Democrats are very popular and the Demo par Democratic Party supports free trade. So if we come through here and we take a look, we would prefer more free trade. Now, obviously, we don't want militancy, but um, most of our country supports the Democrats. So uh, free trade voter issues, it says 100 percent of people support free trade. So militancy shouldn't be an issue. Let us improve our relations with the Empire of Brazil. And uh, that's going to do it for this one. So I hope you guys are enjoying. And I hope that you guys are as excited for Victoria 2 as I am. If you are, like I said in the beginning, please do make sure you show your support by leaving a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not already. Ding the bell. There's plenty of great content to be coming. I plan on branching out and doing even non-paradox titles. So if you guys are excited for some uh, strate strategy gameplay, specifically history oriented, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, if you also want to check out my Patreon and support my work over there, it's going to be linked in the description below as well as the Discord for my community which is a really cool group of people and i encourage you to check out our discord if you have if you're looking for an online community to get involved in a uh, good group of guys over there guys and gals and people in general and uh i also have a twitter if you want to check that out as well we also have merch if you want some cool merch merch is nice i like the merch but anyways that's all i got for you for today this is chewy shoot and i'll catch you guys later hey you made it to the end of the video big special thanks to my top mace supporters on patreon drunk binary bloodbound mr mcflu devos sander angelic bouncer steve sprocket fan man on deck m dressel r lawrence tharup the j baller blonde damon jacko r harvest corbett shankopotamus t jarden a vickman barking glad natsuki harry amorado jay cutchel and winkler rj pilot solier and many more